flight attendant is trained to handle anything, from the routine... Check to see that your seatbelt is securely fastened. ...to the terrifying... Open the seatbelt! Get out! And when that happens, training saves lives. They call it boot camp, and we are, I mean, merciless. I'm gonna feel like a huge failure if I do get sent home today. Before any flight attendant takes off, she must be prepared for the possibilities no one likes to think about. Because keeping passengers comfortable is easy. Keeping them safe, that's the hard part. The preparation begins at flight attendant school. In this episode of flight attendant school. One out of every three of our students will be removed because they cannot maintain our academic requirements or meet the standards of conduct. I'm afraid we're gonna have to let you go tonight and we'll have to escort you out the building. Denver, Colorado, home to Denver International Airport, one of the top 10 busiest airports in the nation. With service across the United States and Mexico, Frontier Airlines is Denver's second largest carrier. Frontier's headquarters is just a few runway lengths from the airport. I'll check to see that your seatbelt is securely fastened. This is where Frontier trains its flight attendants on how to keep their passengers comfortable and how to save their lives. Frontier operates one of the most intensive training programs in the industry. Six-week programs are held throughout the year, led by flight attendants turned instructors who will drill the trainees in the necessary skills. There's the impact of the aircraft. What happens next? Here at Frontier Center One, we bring in our group of initial flight attendants to teach them customer service and, most importantly, the safety aspects of our flight attendant job. Sweet, sweet. The general public truly doesn't see all the responsibilities and the roles that we as flight attendants have. It's not until an emergency situation comes in that the passenger now looks to the flight attendant. Oh, they will tell us what to do. Guess what? We always win. Straight! Straight! Get back! Get back! We teach our flight attendant students how to defend themselves and their passengers should there be a physical confrontation on the aircraft. We teach them how to evacuate in the water. We teach them how to evacuate on land. We teach them how to deal with a medical emergency. We teach them how to take care of irregular situations that may come about while they're flying. Our program is dedicated to the crew members that lost their lives on September 11th. When emergencies do come up, that's when you see the true safety training and the, and the security training that, are, that the flight attendants have gone through. Because their flight attendants must meet the highest standards in the industry, Frontier has a very thorough recruiting process. We are very selective here at Frontier Airlines for our flight attendants in our open houses. Sometimes we have hundreds up to thousands that will actually come into the initial interviewing process. And based on their appearance, based on their poise, based on their background of service, we're looking for people who really get into working with people. So you gotta find people that really connect with them and really like it. Come with me. Let's go. Out of over 1,000 applicants, a new class of 40 was selected. Today is their first day in the program, and the first order of business is trying on uniforms. Go ahead and feel free to try on whatever you anticipate ordering. My name is Heather, and I'm 24 years old from Greeley, Colorado. I want to be a flight attendant not only because, of course, we all want to fly, but um, I like to help people and serve them. And I've been in healthcare for four and a half years, and so it's something kind of different in serving people. My name's Sharon, and I'm 24 years old. 
In high school, I was kind of, I was kind of a B student. I didn't ever put my all into it. So I'm trying to change that, and so I don't want to half-heartedly go through training. I'm Katrina. I'm 29 years old. I'm originally from Dayton, Ohio. This is like a career change for me. I used to dance professionally, and when I left that, I was like, oh, what am I going to do with my life? And finally, I thought flight attending would be really cool. Most of all, I want to make my parents proud. I went to college for a little while, but I didn't finish, and I know that was a big disappointment for them. So ever since then, I've been trying to do something to, you know, make them proud of me. <laughs> My name is William, and I'm 23. I want to be a flight attendant because I like not having a normal 9 to 5. That's the favorite part about being a flight attendant. You don't have an office, you're not bound by four walls, and you get to travel. And you get to see a lot of different people in different situations, so that's more my kind of job. My name is Annie, and I'm 22 years old. Before this, I was a student at the University of Colorado in Boulder. I love the aviation industry. I've grown up around it. My entire family is involved in it. My mom is pilot for Frontier, and my grandpa was a pilot for Pan Am, and my grandma was a flight attendant for them. So it's just a really comfortable environment for me. My name is Stacy, and I'm 23. If I don't make it through the training, I don't really have a plan B. I think there's a level of stress put on me that I haven't, that I've decided not to make a plan B. My name is Suzette. I'm 52 years old. I want to be a flight attendant because it's been, to me, the ultimate dream job all of my life. I have a daughter who's been a flight attendant with Frontier for three and a half years, and I know it's a great company and it's a lot of fun. So, dreams do come true. What size is that? 36. You're at 36. Not normally. I didn't think I was. <laughs> <laughs> like a flight attendant. <laughs> now, it's time to discover just how serious the next six weeks are going to be. All the time people ask us, they're like, how tough could flight attendant training be? You know, you teach them to serve a bag of peanuts and a Pepsi, and yet every single time, uh, after six weeks of training, and, it, and they call it boot camp, and I am the drill sergeant, and we, we are, I mean, merciless. Coming up, and you on learning the, the rules the hard way on flight attendant school. If you are running late, you have lost your training ticket into this classroom. Or somebody late. What? Four minutes. This is the hard part of the job. It's the first day at flight attendant school, and the trainees are about to learn that the program isn't always going to be clear skies. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce you to Pam, our senior director of in-flight and training. Today's orientation for the flight attendants will essentially be their first introduction to our training program. Our senior director, Pam Gardner, will go over with them what the training program is going to look like for the next six weeks. Everybody take a look to your left. Take a look to your right. All right. One of you will probably not graduate from our training school. One out of every three of our students will drop out or be removed because they cannot maintain our academic requirements or meet the standards of conduct. This training program is six weeks. It's intense, it's challenging, it's rigorous. If this were easy, everyone would do it. Pam is stern. She's no joke. She's got a great attitude, but she may rule with an iron fist. As we do rely on on-time performance, it's absolutely critical that you start here. Take a look at that clock behind you. When um, the instructor says, at 5.30 or at 17.30, you need to be in the classroom. You need to be in this classroom. If you are running late and you are on the outside of this door, and we've actually closed this door, you have lost your training ticket into this classroom. That just it made me extremely nervous. I'm one of those people that's always five minutes late, I'm, you know, always running to get somewhere on time, so. I am known to be late a lot. I mean, I'm either going to be two hours early or I am going to be one of those people that gets sent home. There are absolutely no excuses for tardiness. We on the airline industry, we literally lose thousands of dollars every time our flight departs late. 
I've had problems being punctual in the past, and so it is a little unnerving. But I tend to roll with the punches, so just try not to focus on that and do the best I can. It is now 7 o'clock. Um, what we're going to do is, gentlemen, we are going to ask you to follow Frank, Marco, and Chris. Ladies, we're going to take a quick break, kind of freshen up. Look at that back clock at 10 after 7. We're going to regroup, and we're going to talk close, OK? Make sure you're on time. All righty, let's move. All righty. We're going to go over some of the items that are pertinent to the males. First of all, hair, clean and in good condition. Sideburns uh, must be neatly trimmed, may not curve onto the cheeks, OK? And uh, should not extend below the middle of the ear. And I'm trying to think. And we see, yeah, I see a couple here that we'd, uh, we'd want to work on. You must be clean shaven when reporting for duty. And this includes coming in for training. OK. Chris, you need to shave. Yeah. Sherry, would you do the lift test for me? OK. This is why we don't wear mini skirts. Because if this, if Sherry had actually, if that dress started here, she lifted here. Hello. All right. So um, your dresses, as well as your skirt length, they will go middle knee, above knee, maximum two inches from the middle of your knee. We need to talk about a student that just came back late from a break. Four minutes. Like, oh, really? Uh-huh. So she's sitting in class now. Pam's still talking. But yeah, she was at least four minutes. Did we give an official time on oh, this yeah. clock? Oh, yeah. Pam it's... did 10 after. And she came in almost 14 after. So, And she looked at me and looked at the clock. So I'm pretty sure she <clears throat> she, she knows she's late. OK. Or somebody I'm... late. What? Somebody thinking... late. We've never let anybody stay. I mean, especially right after Pam just did this. I know. And we'll meet you back down there. All right. Well, sure. see you in a bit, I guess. All right, thank you. Thank okay. You. What I want you to do, study. Please study. I want you to be really successful here. Study very hard. Let's have a good night. Safe home, OK? As they exit, you're going to pull her aside. OK. Are you all clear with turning in here? OK. Is it Tori? What happened? I went outside to get something for my car. And I came back to the front doors, and I was opening it. So I had to knock on the um, window. Well, let's have a seat. The, um, We've been doing this since the beginning and the policy is the policy is it is what it is and I have to follow it there can't be any exceptions because we've, we've set the precedent Tree, this is the hard part of it I know I, I'm sorry is that we had just talked about the, right. how important on-time performance is and we start from the very beginning I, I, I understand that completely and I had no clue that the doors would be locked. I honestly didn't know that. And when I went out to the front, when I went out the front doors and I came back in and they were locked and I just, I waited for someone to see me and nobody came through the lobby or anything so then I knocked on the windows where the people sit with the computers and I honestly had no clue that the doors would be locked. Unfortunately, we, we just, um, we set the tone right away. Yeah. And um, Tori, I, I, it's just, it, this is the hard part of the job. I'm afraid we're going to have to let you go tonight. Okay. And um, we understand your circumstance, but we have a policy we have to Absolutely. live by. So um, we wish you good luck. Thank you for taking the time for us. We'll collect this. Frank, yep. is there anything else we need? I'll Sorry. walk out to the front. With you. Okay. Gosh, All right. You. All right. Good luck to you, Tori. Thank you, Tori. No one ever likes to terminate someone. Uh, I've always been told that if you ever begin to enjoy it, you need a new career. 
the, uh, it's, a, it's a real downer to have to let somebody go because you know how hard they've worked to get to that point. And, but it, it's, it's really not fair to the other students that return back to, uh, back to the classroom on time. I certainly hope this is the last student that uh, ends up leaving the program. Statistically, we will uh, probably lose some others. What I do encourage you to do, though, is because you got to this place, is um, take a look at us again in six months. I, I don't know exactly what will be happening here at Frontier in six months, but um, please try again. OK? All right. Thank you, Tori. Thank you very much. Best of luck. All right. Bye -bye. I was just really excited, you know, to get going with this chapter in my life, and you know, I just quit my job, so now I have no job. And I'm embarrassed. My heart is crushed. Yeah, I'm very upset. With one student already fired, what else could happen at flight attendant school? After their first day at school, the students were given material covering airline safety. Now the students will face several verbal and written tests on the information. If they pass, they'll continue on in the program. But if they fail more than two tests, they'll be terminated. The first test is on the oral safety demonstration. This is the safety speech that all flight attendants give at the beginning of every flight. It gives passengers the critical safety information they need if disaster strikes the students must perfectly recite the two-minute speech from memory. They have one oral demo, which they're required to memorize the whole thing. It's big, it's long, it's nasty, but they need to memorize it and then reiterate it to us today while they're taking their test. You tell me when you're in. It's weird. I don't think I'll have a problem saying it, like, to passengers on a plane, but I get so nervous knowing that I'm going to, I'm being tested. <laughs> I'm ready. OK. <clears throat> Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We would again like to welcome you aboard Frontier Airlines Airbus 319 jet service to Detroit. Our flying time is one hour, 48 minutes. Smoking is not prohibited on this aircraft, including the lavatories. Oh. Check to make sure that your seatbelt is securely fastened and that your carry-on items are placed underneath the seat in front of you. In the event of a water evacuation, your seat cushion is designed for flotation. The cushion is easily, easily removed. Your flight attendants today will be Coco, Janet, and my name is Chris. In command today, we have Captain John, assisted by First Officer Obra. In Please direct your attention to the flight attendants in the aisle. Um, and that all carry-on items are placed underneath the seat in front of you. Thank you for your attention and enjoy your flight. <laughs> <laughs> you passed. Thank You're you. fine. I want you to breathe. <sighs> Who's next? Can I have three seconds? Sure. Okay. Take your time. Okay. Thank yes. you. I didn't used to have test anxiety, but since I haven't been in school, I freak out when it's cram time. With all her practice, Katrina still can't shake her nervousness. Okay, here we go. I can't look at you, sorry. <laughs> and I won't look at you. Okay. okay. <laughs> Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We would again like to welcome you to Frontier Airlines Airbus 319 jet service to St. Louis. As we prepare for takeoff, please make sure that seat backs and tray tables are in the upright and locked position. Please locate the, ex the nearest exit, keeping in mind that it may be behind you. Federal law prohibits tampering with, disabling, or destroying lavatory smoke detectors. Thank you for your attention, and we hope you enjoy your flight. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I know you were shaking so hard. <laughs> <laughs> you did fine. Thank you. You did absolutely Excellent. right. Thank okay. you. <laughs> it was very nerve-wracking. I was stressed out. I was shaking. I was sweating. 
This is just no good. <laughs> oh, is gonna fall over? I, I, you know what I thought? We might have to do this <laughs> <I> PR <know>. here. <laughs> Meanwhile, instructor Marco notices a problem with one of the students. Right. Talk to you for a second. Uh oh. Uh, one of our students. Yes. Jeremy, he didn't complete all of his physical testing. He, um, when it was time to do his hearing test, he chose not to do it. When I tried to contact him to come in to meet with us before this class started, he never returned any of my calls, and I also emailed him like three or four times. And I'll call him and uh, tell him that, hey, you gotta get it, you gotta get it done before you come in for the testing. Jeremy arrives at school without returning a single call. That one student that we were talking about earlier, Jeremy, yes. he is here, but he never called. Did he uh, finish his appointment? No. Okay, we're going to have to let him go. Okay, do you want him to start his tests or? No, okay. no, um, unfortunately, um, and I can have that conversation with him. We, uh, we're going to stop with Pam real, talk to Pam real quick. Okay. One of the conditions for employment with all of our students is that they complete their physical examination with our uh, airline doctor, and he did not complete that. And that physical needed to be completed before today. Jeremy, we've got a problem. What's that? Uh, unfortunately, um, we've, we've left you several messages in regards to your uh, third class medical with Dr. Ladwick. The audio portion was never completed. The what? Audio, the hearing. The doctor's office has called you, human resources called you, I haven't and any training has called you. At all. Sarah from HR called you this morning, and Frank, our manager of flight training, he called you earlier today, twice. At this point in time, knowing that we have made numerous attempts to contact you, I'm going to have to stop the process right now. And um, we'll have to take your badge. No. And um, Marco will escort you out the building. Good luck to you. Thank you. You too. Take care. Hearing about people being let go for coming back late, not passing health tests, really puts the puts the pressure on. It just shows that they mean what they're what they're saying. You know, if you're late, you're let go. If you don't follow the rules, you're let go. Um, normally when students get released from the training program, sometimes they start crying because they want this so bad that they almost see uh, their dream of a flight attendant slip away. This is a very strict program. We have a lot of people who want to do this job, and not only this job, but they want to do it at Frontier. So we are looking for the best of the best. Coming up on Flight Attendant School. I'm in brain overload right now. Oh, she really had a hard time. Uh -huh. What's happened is she's now missed two examinations, and then I'll have to unfortunately let her go. As test day continues, the students have completed the oral safety demonstration and now must move on to several written exams covering emergency procedures such as evacuations and emergency landings. We gave them all the testing information they needed and now they need to come back and uh, prove to us that they can study. The rules are clear. If a student fails any two tests, they will be dismissed from the program. Today we have five tests which we need to score 90% or higher on all of them in order to continue on with the class. So it's a little bit of pressure. I'm in brain overload right now. The students tonight will take four written exams. One will be on company history. Another will be on terminology that we use in the airline business. Another is on city codes. And then they also need to know the 24-hour clock. SJC. San Jose, California. SHR. Today's rough. I feel 10 pressure because if I don't make it today, I'm not in the class. For me, the tests are the hardest part just because I'm just not fond of tests, studying, all that stuff. And it's a big deal, you know, if you don't pass, you're done. How's it going? Here we are. The worst thing that can happen to a student is that they're not successful with two uh, or more exams and then they will be released from the program. I just got done completing our test today. I'm glad that 
now I just have to wait for the results and then just think about class on Monday. I think I did okay. I'm not as confident with this one. I feel pretty good about the test. It's probably not 100%, but I'm pretty sure that I passed. I'm just a little concerned about um, the definitions. We're going to go ahead and pass your folders out. If you have a retake, again, we will see you at 7.30 on Monday morning. Once you're finished looking, uh, you're welcome to go. I have a retake. <laughs> I knew it. Do you? Yes. What one? I'm, I told you, on the company program. Guess what? I passed. I got 100%. Yes, I did. Thank you. I'm so excited. I passed my test, Mommy. Love you lots. Bye-bye. He's all excited. <laughs> oh, kind of emotional. <laughs> I'm stressed out. Now I need a beer. One student is about to find out that she failed two tests. This means termination from the program. Oh, no. So she's mixing up her mornings? Uh-huh. And even this one, you know, she just, I don't know, she just didn't read it. Oh, she really had a hard time. Uh. Um, let's go ahead and get Kelly. We're going to have to let her go. What's happened is she's now missed two examinations, and then I'll have to unfortunately let her go. And that's the tough part about the job. Um, why don't you come on in, Kelly? You know what? This is difficult. This is difficult information, Kelly. This this is hard. Um, let me just kind of walk you through. Okay? I had I don't know if you rushed through them or just really weren't reading them, but the 24-hour was a retake. And unfortunately, the airline terminology, and I think that's where you kind of felt. Oh, Kelly, this is, this is hard. This, you're not the only one, OK? So at this point in time, I'm going to have to let you go. Okay. All right? Yeah. OK. We're not even done with our first week, and there's been three people that have been asked to leave the program. And that just shows that the instructors aren't joking when they say you have to be on time and you have there's a certain expectation that you have to meet. It's only the second day of training and already three students have been asked to leave the program. Next on, flight attendant school. This will be her one retake. So for the rest of the training, she has to pass every single test first time through to stay in the program. Students who fail two exams are dismissed from the Frontier Training Program. Since Heather only failed one exam on the first big test day, she qualifies for a retake. I do have to do a retest on the history part of uh, Frontier. Passengers and people all around will ask you questions about Frontier, so they want you to know. Good morning. Good morning. How are you guys? Good. Good. You ready for this? Yes. This will be her one retake. So for the rest of the training program and the 28 tests to come, she has to pass every single test the first time through to stay in the program. I'm going to pass the test back out. This is the exact same test that you guys took on Friday. Just bring it up to me. We'll grade it right here on the spot. You ready? Yeah. Cool. My focus is changing now for the next six weeks, just more because I am using my only retake today, um, which means that I do have to bust my butt and keep focus. I'm burning my get out of jail free, my one retake. test is to pick 10 cities that Frontier flies to, and um, she missed one of them on there. So, but one is okay. You can actually miss up to three and still pass the test. Now you guys can't get rid of me. <laughs> get rid of you. 
Where are we, we going? We want to get rid of it. Uh, okay. We were going to come and help you if you need me. I passed my retake test, and I felt awesome about it. I'm in the class now, and it's just up from here. If anybody needs help with housing, don't leave. We've got something worked out for you. Please come back in the room and have a seat. Today at the end of class, um, one of the instructors um, said they found a house for us to live in. Some of us are looking for a place to live. Um, some of us just want to be closer to class. Eight of the students are given directions to a house near the Frontier Training Center. Let's go. Let's do a little um, follow the leader. I'm looking forward to being the house mom. The house is supposed to be very nice. After we all got settled into the house, we decided it'd be good to have a house meeting just to see how things would go, like shower time, just everyday things that need to be discussed. We're going to have a roommate. Charge. Who called this meeting? What's going on? Yeah, wait, let's see. <laughs> just talk about, like, who can shower at night, who can shower in the morning. What time are we thinking? I'll get up at 5, right, Katrina? We'll do 5. So should one person be in charge of making sure everyone's getting ready and we're going to get out of here on time each day? Yeah, uh, every day I will. Well, yeah, but at the same time, we're all yet. adults. We have to leave no matter what. Yeah. Well, and I think everybody should have their little book bags packed and ready at the door. We're all 20 plus. I mean, I think we could all pack our bags and plus, make plus. sure we're ready. I don't need anybody chasing behind me. Is your backpack? Are you welcome? <laughs> Come on. During the house meeting, Suzette kind of wanted us to have somebody be in charge of making sure everybody's bags packed, making sure everybody's up, and I just feel that we're all adults, and, and I don't personally need anybody to tell me, Katrina, is your backpack? Katrina, are you ready? You know, I've been getting myself ready for over 20 years, so I don't need anybody to tell me. Just know that the bus is leaving at 7, exactly. if you're on it or not. <laughs> I think it's important to build a friendship because you're spending six weeks with these people. Most of us aren't seeing our friends and family as much, and we're all in this together, so we might as well enjoy it. Well, I mean, as long as no one takes, like, 30-minute shower. Yeah. I'll be pulling your butt out the shower. <laughs> Soap it off. I don't have a backup plan. I don't have, you know, a second job. So hopefully, you know, we could be each other's support group. I've always wanted to be a flight attendant from the time I've been 18 years old. I feel I have the compassion, the ability. Raising five children, there isn't really too many things that are left that I haven't had to contend with. I'm going to bring pictures of the kids yeah, and the grandkids. Well, with my age, I have a little bit of a conflict there, but hey, there isn't anything I really can't do. This is probably the last thing on my list of things I wanted to do in my life, and my life would be like completely perfect. 15 minutes. I'm making an appointment with my hairdresser. Two days. I've never lived with seven other people in a house. Um, I grew up with my parents and one other brother, so we both always had our own room. So this is an experience for me, eight people in two bathrooms, or two and a half bathrooms. <laughs> 10 minutes. Good luck, man. 10 minute countdown. Uh-huh. It's kind of strange being in a house with young people because they're kind of different than what my kids were. My daughters are not into the hairspray and the makeup and the... <laughs> so, uh, it's pretty different. All students are required to spend one day during training seated in a wheelchair, making them more aware of the difficulties faced by special needs passengers during emergency evacuations. Do you need help back? Uh, I'll be fine. Are you sure? Unless you want to push me around for a little bit. Where are you going? I'm Where gonna... are you going, Candace? I'm going to go, I'm going to get some coffee. Well, go ahead, I'll wait. Okay. I'll just sit here. You think you understand what it's like to be in a wheelchair, but even just being in it for a day, it kind of gives you a little more perspective of what it's like. You got it? Oh my god, this is not comfortable. I want to complain this morning because I'm going to be a complainer this morning. Marco, could I have a pillow? It's poking my butt. <laughs> my back is already hurt. Are you serious? Tim, I only got one footstool thing. Could you fix this for me, please? The wheelchair's kind of hurting the butt. 
And I honestly think that I have a lot of respect. I've always had a lot of respect for people in wheelchairs, and now I really have a lot more respect for people in wheelchairs. My butt's already sore. We get extra points, right? I just think she's created more drama than, than necessary. Yeah. <laughs> The students must learn the Federal Aviation Regulations, or FARs, which govern every flight attendant's safety and emergency responsibilities. We're going to spend a lot of day on those FARs. How many people thought they were a little confusing? And it's okay to raise your hand. <laughs> Marco divides the students into teams who must work as a group to learn the FARs. I want everyone to work together. If I walk into one of the rooms and I see that no one's talking to each other, one person's done, the other person's sitting here on page one, that's not a very good team. This worksheet should not take you more than two hours. If it does, it's going to cut into your lunch a little bit. What if we get done early? If you get done early, you get a longer lunch. Have fun. Get to what know each other. As FARs are standard in the industry, students who were formerly flight attendants have an advantage. Team Jack has two former flight attendants, Chris and Stacy. How's it going? I don't hear you talking. Oh. Are you afraid to talk to each other? No, because everybody's right. at the wrong spot. They're all getting all excited. Oh, who's running this show? Yeah. Who is in charge? Yeah. This is for interaction. <laughs> I I work better on my own. Good, good. We're ahead of everybody. Go oh, right and quit talking. This is a little unorganized. It's kind of hard to do this in a group, to be yeah. honest. Mm -hmm. I'm We're supposed to be talking. There's three of us that are in the group that have a slower, mindset we could use Chris and Stacy's help working on a, a project like that you need to work on it so that you can learn something not so that you're just in a hurry to get it done it's a race now you guys you're way ahead of the bunch of piano we are a 91.17 oh yeah we're a 91.3 <laughs> oh, <laughs> from time to time we'll see those groups where they just want to work independently and, and I think by the end of the worksheet they'll probably not even talk to each other and just be filling it out and uh, completely not doing anything that I asked them to do you guys you really need to work as a group so you really need to come together and work as a group here. Because I see some fours and some fives. I just want to make sure you guys are completing this as a team. Does it pass? Oh, I don't oh, know. Passenger. Oh, what is? These guys are doing great as a group down here. <laughs> They're all talking and the same number. Wow, that's amazing. On a scale of one to 10, it's very hard to work on a group. It's probably like <laughs> 10 is the worst. Coming up on Flight Attendant School. If your goal was to have a long lunch, you can leave tonight and not come back. It's just bullshit. The trainees are working in teams to learn their emergency responsibilities. But frustrated with some of her teammates from Team Jack, Suzette complained to Marco during a break. We have a little problem. I had a couple students come up and talk to me about some comments they heard from their fellow groupmates. Apparently there were some snide remarks being made, some comments like, I can't believe they're not getting this, or she's not riding fast enough. Uh, stuff like that is not going to fly here. So if those types of things are being said, we will not let that go any further. Okay, so this is the one little warning. Any questions? How was the first day of learning your new job? I do need Jack to stick around, though. Everybody can go except for Jack, please. Um, I've noticed that Team Jack isn't displaying proper teamwork in this exercise, so I'm going to have to talk to him about that. OK, you guys, so what happened today with your group? Well, I think we need to grow patience. I think there's some of us that know some things. We should all be able to help, some, you know, help everybody else out with what we know. You have two, at least two people in this group that have prior airline knowledge, and they can share that with you, and this is a chance for you to grow with it. But unfortunately, that didn't happen today. I don't think our prior knowledge is the best. I mean, it's good to have, and I'm glad. But sometimes I piped up, and then I'd read, and I it, I was mistaken, and and so I felt worse. I think we my, my my thing was I think we had different expectations as to what we wanted to get done. Like there was comments that were made about hurrying to finish to have a long lunch, and then um, if your goal today was to have a long lunch. I can help you out with that. You can have the longest lunch you want. You can leave tonight and not come back. I made a joke about it, but it wasn't that I wanted to rush through it. And, and I, I mean, I'm sorry if you know it was taken seriously. It wasn't meant to. It felt like from your group members that you guys were really separated 
and it wasn't one team. And when you guys were done, I can tell you that some of your group members were very, very hurt and upset. So I want you guys to work on this. You're going to be in this group for a while. Okay, thanks guys. Thank we'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Having just been reprimanded by Marco for not being a team player, Stacy's angry with Suzette for going outside the group. I'm upset. I'm upset because if this group can't be mature enough to just sit down and, and talk, you know, and say, hey, this is what I want out of this, this is what I need. You know what? Nobody fing tried. Nobody fing tried in the group. I don't know if I can get used to this. I should have thought this whole thing through. I know you have to work as a group, but if this group causes me this job, I'll be upset. It's just bullshit. I need to gain my composure. Realizing how upset Stacy is, members of her team question why Suzette complained to Marco. Apparently someone got their feelings hurt and said something. Even if I did get my feelings hurt, though, I don't think I'd go the teacher. Yeah. I just think that if you have a problem with somebody, let the person know how you feel before you go to somebody who could potentially fire them. That's like petty. OK, let's go. Four. Tomorrow's <laughs> another day, kids. I think, you know, as, as adults and as responsible people, bring it to the table. Pressure has been building at the house since the discussion with Marco. Do I need to fasten my seatbelt during taxi takeoff and landing? Yes. So in an effort to relieve the tension, Suzette decides to approach Stacy. We need to talk. We do. No, Stacy and I. Oh. But you all can stay, because there's no secrets here. Now, I came in to tell you I apologize, because I'm one of the big mouths that started the thing today. And I didn't say you. I said to Marco when he came up, he asked me what the problem was, and I said, we just can't get along. If you have a problem, take it to the group. But I want to apologize to you if you think I was the no, troublemaker. No, and I don't, I don't think anybody's necessarily completely at fault, and I don't think anybody's necessarily completely in the right. It's, it's nothing that should, should bother us, because it's not a problem, and it shouldn't have been a problem to OK, well, I just wanted to make sure that you and I were OK, because. No, I, I, I honestly I mean, it was just casual conversation that turned into a problem that it didn't need to be. Will you no. study? I'm going I have upstairs. to write my paper. I'm going to bed. I hope that, you know, it's been repaired and that everything goes along smoothly because I don't do confrontation well. <laughs> I think I'm just on emotional overload. I shouldn't have gotten so upset about it. I have to cry about something. I might as well pick something petty. <laughs> Otherwise, it sounds more deep than it is. Everybody's going to have their moments. I like crying. It's a whole lot better than hating somebody. on the next episode of Flight Attendant School. They don't want to get to class when we're supposed to get to class. If we're supposed to leave at 7, they want to go at 7.15. I'm ready! They're laughing, they're giggling. I'm hearing it all. You seemed really irritated and bitter and pulled away from the group. Oh, she just didn't get enough sleep last night. I tried to be a part of the group, but it just doesn't happen. Get me out of here.